People used to bring me up on stage like, he's the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's so <laughs> contrived. That is so, what am I, Chris Angel? Other comedians have called me like, oh, he's a monster. He's unsafe. You can't. <laughs> yeah, it's funny yeah. when you can't get hard. <laughs> it's funny when you poo your pants. They say that we're like 97% water, but we're actually made out of milk. Okay, I know this guy's taboo, but Kanye. <laughs> I saw this like clip on, and he's fucked up, don't get me wrong, but I saw this clip where he said like, an artist is a business, and I agree. When you are a comedian, you've opened up a business, right? And if you owned a sandwich shop, and people go, oh, you know, Greg, don't you run a sandwich shop or something? You can't be like, don't eat there. I mean, it's, it's not that good. It's Johnny Late Night! And now here's your host, Johnny Rogers! Welcome back everyone to episode number 74 of the Johnny Rogers Show. I'm very excited for my guest today, but first, if you want these episodes ad-free, exclusive, and before anyone else, you gotta go to patreon.com backslash the Johnny Rogers. It's like a dollar a month and you're gonna enjoy all the content that you get on there. Plus, the more people that subscribe, the more reason I have to post content on there. But today, um, one of I believe that we actually started at the same time and he has just skyrocketed into comedy fame. He's one of the youngest headlining comedians in Canada. Growing up in a trailer park, he became an expert at making light of bleak circumstances. Pair that with an extensive background in improv and theater and you get a comedian with raw, honest material performed in the most ridiculously fun way. His comedy has been featured on CTV, Sirius XM, and MTV, and he's also been nominated for the I Heart Joke Awards twice. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further delay, please give it up for my friend and yours, Kyle Lucy. Hi, Johnny. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> it's weird hearing shit. Like, yeah. you're like, hearing your bio, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> That's always been my favorite part. I used to yeah. add it in post, like, after the episode where I just kind of record it and then cut into conversation. But I think the reaction to people's bios is so much more fun to start the episode with. I'm like, fuck, I wrote that. I'm an asshole. <laughs> That's good. You should feel like that as a comedian, though. I don't like these comedians who are like, yeah, fuck, fuck yeah, I did. Like, I'm awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I need I a mean, little bit. I'm trying to get a balance <clears throat> between being humble, because being too humble you're like, no, 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 yeah, yeah. thank you, but no, I'm okay. And then you look at your calendar and there's no fucking, no one's booking you. So you're <laughs> yeah, like, hey, yeah, you yeah. got to have a little bit of, you got to have a little bit of like, not I'm the best, but you got to have a little bit of, um, you know, I, I think that like every comic is, I okay, I know this guy's taboo, but Kanye, <laughs> I saw this like clip on, and he's fucked up, don't get me wrong, but I saw this clip where he said like an artist is a business and I agree. An artist is a business. And, you know, like when, when you are a comedian, you know, you've opened up a business, right? And mm -hmm. if you owned a sandwich shop and people go, oh, you know, Greg, don't you run a sandwich shop or something? You can't be like, don't eat there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not that good. Some place so much better. I mean, have you yeah. tried their stuff? <laughs> you can't be like that. You're no. just... You gotta, you do have to be like, yeah, no, it's great. If you want to go there, definitely it's, it's there and it's awesome. And we make great sandwiches, you know? So, but anyway, it, it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear compliments. Yeah. It's like when, you know, when people sing you happy birthday, you're just like, oh, you're so, <laughs> you're just embarrassed for some reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're like embarrassed that you were even born. It's like, just, why it did just... I, oh, I'm so stupid. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's because we've seen so many examples of people who are like just being very braggadocious about all the stuff. That they, and it's just off. There's something off putting about it. Right. Like you're just like, I don't really want to be around someone that constantly wants to talk about like their own shit. Like people want to be around people that are curious about the people that they're around. Right. And want to like ask them questions so that they can get better. Like. I find the people that I respect the most are the people that are doing shit, but um, the work shows, you know, like when you see them on stage, if we're taking comedians, for example, you see them on stage and you're like, oh man, these jokes are really tight. And it's like, yeah, because they've been busting their ass, you know, like mm -hmm. they, they, they just aren't online every day being like, today I did another five shows and killed them all. It's like, you yeah. don't need to go that far with it, you know? 
Yeah, totally. I mean, less, less, uh, less speech, more action, you know, I'm trying yeah. to be that way too. It, it's yeah. The, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know the right answers. I'm trying to, I'm figuring it out every day. I see. Uh, yeah. Anyway. I wonder if the episode name should be humility or action. <laughs> I know. I mean, like what's the word that you were thinking of just when I brought that to you. Hmm. I mean, humility, I think that's a trait that I have adopted. It didn't, I used to be very uh, braggadocious, but I've become more humble lately. Uh, it's probably been the martial arts journey, but I feel like um, the thing is you can't be too humble. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't mm -hmm. be too humble because like I said before, this isn't the industry to be too humble. It's good to be humble, but you can't, you have to, there's a certain part where you have to say, no, I'm, I'm worth this. Yeah. I'm yeah, worth yeah. that. You can't be like, or else you're going to be 15 years in and not getting paid. And like, yeah. what's that's like masochistic at a certain way. So you have, you have to, you have to know your worth and stuff like that, but it's definitely, it's such a balance and I struggle with the balance, but it is exactly what you said, though, about like looking at yourself more of a business. And so you kind of remove when it's a business, you remove the ego of the, you know, the bragging part of it. And it's not bragging, then it becomes advertising. Like you're just, yes, you're and just it's advertising. You. It's not you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your act that you're advertising, like five yeah. sold out shows like that to me speaks more volume <laughs> than someone saying like, every joke I do is awesome. There's a difference between those two, right? Five saying you've sold out five shows or you sold out this theater. It's just like, okay, now I can put value on that act as what it can do business wise versus like what the individual's art is, you know? Yeah. Um, before then we get I, any I longer, the right answer. Sorry. Before we, before we get any further along here, because I know some people, the, the, not everyone listens to the entire podcast. So I always like to shout out social media as early on as possible so that Sweet. people can check out your Instagram, Kyle Lucy Comedy. Uh, there's an E in Lucy. Go check out the TikTok. I always put all those links in the description down below too, but um, I always thought it's My good. My TikTok too. sucks, by the way. My TikTok's. <laughs> so I've been, I've been banned. So you know when you go on TikTok, let's say you uh, first get a TikTok, right? Yeah. It says you could log in through Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, or uh, there's one like more. Like your phone number or something, I think. I've been banned from every option. <laughs> and now I'm on a, my second fake Gmail. So I heard that they like scan your f face. So for whatever reason, like I post a lot. I post the same content on my Instagram and my Facebook. My Instagram is just starting to do okay. Like I'm getting, I, there's people, you know, that you and me both know that are like in the stratosphere of fame, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like yeah. are doing very well. So I'm not, but basically my Instagram is experiencing growth. Like I'm getting like 6 million people a month mm -hmm. on my Instagram and I've gotten some followers on my Instagram. My TikTok, it's like, I can't get a video over 230 views. I don't know if it's because maybe i used to you know i don't know how to put this but um <clears throat> i used to be much more abrasive as a comedian um i used to you know i came from a very like rough um upbringing and until i you know i i have a side life where i'm like an amateur fighter and it's sort of like that really was like a home for my all the pain that I had whereas before fighting I just had comedy and mm. so my material was almost very um you know even the, if the joke was written well it was just very like you know the, a song that comes to mind is Eminem's Kim <laughs> sure it's art but it's like it, it was like people would people yeah, would not yeah. to touch it so much so that yeah. was fine when you walk in a basement comedy club, you know you're seeing some fucked up. But on the internet, when COVID happened, 
I would just take my phone and just be in my room like a crazy person, just say something fucked up and <laughs> then just share it online. For the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? People being like, this guy's fucking crazy. People would be like, this guy yeah. is like a serial killer. And viral for it, the wrong reasons is a good way to put it. Yeah, like I would say stuff like in a comedy club setting, I'd be like, well, that's obviously a joke. But people don't know I'm a comedian. I'm just this guy in my room because it's like yeah, COVID yeah. lockdown. So it took me a while to understand and to transfer my art to a different medium being mm-hmm. online. It took me, a, it took me like three years of failing. And now I'm experiencing some growth on Instagram, a little bit on YouTube, but not much on YouTube and zero on TikTok. So mm. it's just like, but what keeps me going is that Instagram is doing okay. Instagram's starting yeah. to. So it's like, okay, well, I just got to keep, chipping away and that's it and um yeah so it, it's, it's been one of those things man it's yeah. half luck i think like it's, yeah. it's it's half of it is the the people that are watching your content eventually will get to a point where they're so engaged with it like they you'll have the same people commenting on every post and then those are going to be the people that are sharing it. That's going to be the real reason why a piece of your content goes viral, right? Like they're going to tell every friend they have, you have to watch this video right now. Like if you ever had somebody do that, they like st- make you stop everything you're doing and then they stick a phone in your face to just show you a video. Like we're hoping to one day be that video that people are like, you got to fucking listen to this guy's take on whatever, right? It's going to change your life, right? But you don't ever get to that point unless you're just trudging through the shit every day, like creating, posting, and just not caring what the view count is on it. It's, it's exactly like writing for stand-up. You're not going to write a perfect joke the first time you sit down. You're going to have to write a bunch of shit and then filter through it and then find the diamonds within there. But online content creation, it's a little bit different. I don't even want to talk about any of that stuff. What I'm most interested in is your transition into ta- it was Taekwondo. No, uh, I do Muay Thai, Muay Thai? and Jiu-Jitsu. Muay Thai. Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. So what was the, walk me through the thought process of you going, because you're, I know you as a hustler. Like, I, I'm like, how does this guy have any time to do anything? How does he have time to eat? <laughs> he just, he just works and does stand up and that's, that's it. Right. So when, when did you decide, like, I'm going to go into, you know, this very physical sport and I'm going to learn it. And then you even competed recently as well. Right. Yeah, I had my first uh, what's known as a demo. So it's a fight with um, basically the rules of C-class. So amateur Muay Thai fights, there's C-class, B-class, and then I believe it's called A-class and open class. Um, So it's the rules of C-class, which means there's a bit more protection for the athletes. So that being like there's no elbows to the head and there's no knees to the head. Okay. Whereas like Muay Thai, you're fucking, you're getting sliced, you're getting kneed in the head, like the pros, right? And yeah. honestly, and in Muay Thai, uh, uh, the thing that I did, we have shin guards, we have headgear, we have elbow pads, we've got knee pads. So you're not taking a bone to the dome. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because that would so not be good for the comedy side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever, I mean, I'm never going to say never, like, uh-huh. You know what I mean? I train once or twice a day um, and whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I got <laughs> my plate's pretty full. Yeah. A couple, I, I'd like to have a couple fights just as like my grandkids are playing with some boxing gloves. I'd be like, you know, have you ever fought? I'd be like, yeah, I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd like to get a couple jujitsu belts, do a couple tournaments and that's it. Like, I'd like to just say that I did type of, yeah, type yeah. Of day. And, and also be able to like protect myself and the people I love, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm fucking the protect yourself thing is huge. Like you actually yeah. had a real life scenario where you were doing comedy outside and a woman, was it a woman or was it a guy? Like, I mean, that somebody was that was came nothing. over I mean, to, but I mean, like the fact that you were able to like, somebody is physically imposing themselves on you and mm-hmm. you have that kind of knowledge of like well at least i know how to defend myself in this situation you know yeah. aside from them brandishing a weapon which i wouldn't be surprised in toronto these nobody days nobody pulled a weapon actually <laughs> someone did pull a weapon but not, it wasn't on me uh, you know, 
during lockdown, all these fucking like crazy people started like, you know, all the violence on the TTC. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Someone pulled out like a fixed blade, like this fucking big on the TTC, and he brandished it to the whole cart. And then he had his hoodie strings, he just cut them off like this. And then he walked and sort of menacingly looked at it, walked and and shit like that. I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? This city is this city's turning into Gotham. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I keep my training up and uh it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, that's all that's all you gotta do. You gotta I do it for my own mm-hmm. sanity. I do it so that I feel safe. I genuinely feel very safe because I um like danger, I put myself into it. I'm I'm I I used to never, you know, when we played Roadhawk, it flinched when when a puck would go near me. And now I like I sort of just eliminated that fear, but um, but yeah, I'm trying to take it easy too because the thing is, as you said, where do you get the time? Yeah, am I gonna be? How many people do you know have Netflix specials and are in the UFC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you gotta, you, at the end of the day. <laughs> If you really want to do something, you got to go all in, right? So, yeah, yeah. We all know that. Yeah, that's 100%. Yeah, so, I think this. it's good to like um, diversify in terms of the things that you can do. But it's important, I think, to focus on where you want to grow the most and then spend the most amount of time doing that. But how have you found... I mean, you did mention that it kind of like chilled you out a little bit on stage. But have you seen like... Uh, a, a really big difference in any other ways, like since joining something very physical to your performance on stage? Like, do you find yourself just much more comfortable or relaxed in your own voice? It made me funnier. It made it did make me a hell of a lot funnier. Because I used to have an energy in me that was like this fucked up, a- angry energy. And I used to go up on stage and I, the jokes were very well written but my vibe was very, I don't know, even know what it was. Angry. It was yeah, angry. Angry is good. Way to yeah. People would laugh, but then after the show, no one would look me in the eyes. <laughs> yeah. They're like, like, I want to talk to that fucking guy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas now I get people taking pictures with me, people following me online and, you know, people just going like, you were so funny, you know, or like whatever, like now, it's like people think I'm really funny mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's, isn't that what you want? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You don't um, be scared of you. <laughs> yeah. Like I was just like a little bit of a weirdo before and I'm still a weirdo. I'm really leaning into the, that warm gooey weird center that, that makes the, the genuine humor, the thing that actually makes me funny. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, basically, the whole, you know, fighting thing, it's it's good to do. And hell, there's a lot of hours in the day. There's a lot of hours in the day. Truly, yeah. I, if you remove leisure, there's you have a lot of time. There's mm-hmm. a lot of time. This is why I was able, I was in full fight camp. I was posting fucking 10 times a day, um, doing shows every night. You know what I mean? That being said, the one thing that does suffer is that you can't take, I, I was auditioning for shit like that, mm-hmm. for acting and stuff like that. But the thing is, you can't take your career to the next level, in my opinion, if I'm constantly trained. I can't, the thing is, I couldn't tour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I was in Toronto. Uh, that wasn't that much of a problem because I recorded my album. Um, yeah, when's in, it coming uh, out? in a few months so okay, that's why nice, i timed nice. it so that when my album releases i could launch my website go on tour yeah and yeah while it was being like edited and stuff like that by my label i took a fight you know what i'm saying okay yeah yeah so, yeah so it's not that big of a deal that i'm just based yeah. in toronto that being said when i want to eventually i want a tour once my album releases i probably won't take a fight until maybe I, I need to catch up on a, a bunch of the comedy goals that I have. Yeah, yeah. Now, that that being said, I don't think I'm necessarily behind because I had to wait for it to come out anyway. So I just basically saw a gap in my calendar, took a fight. 
type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. it, that gap would have been there anyway. In the meantime, posting content, doing shows. And that's sort yeah. of basically what my life is going to be, you know, um, as in terms of like, oh, but your training is going to take away from comedy. How many comedians, you know, work out a good life? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't work out a good life. I work out at a Muay Thai gym. Yeah. Yeah. That a thousand is, percent. Is a, and an I, hour a day. Dude, I say this all the time is um, it's one thing to hustle and it's another thing to get um, think that that's the only thing, because what happens is you get a lot of comedians who get too wrapped up in needing to do stand up every night that they don't live a life outside of stand up. So but I still do stand up every night, but the yeah, people, but I mean like in the like, sense of like, they only focus on that. They like, they, right. they won't, they won't go out and experience something like trying, you know, a Muay Thai class because they think like, this is going to take away from my stand up time. And it's like, or yeah. it could help it. Like in your situation here, it's like, does it bring you joy? Then do that thing. Right. Yeah, because it definitely it gave me also. So my girlfriend is uh, biracial. She helped me a lot too. In turn, because I'm a white guy from a. I, so I never really. I lived in trailer parks. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But my my family we were like house flippers. That um, we'd in the school year, live in the suburbs and flip houses. Mm. But in the summer, we had a trailer that we would live in, and that was sort of our home because I, I had that trailer since I was four years old. Yeah. Family, family pets are buried at that trailer park. Uh, I have a there's a there's a closet door where my height is since yeah, I was a yeah. child. So the the we'd flip houses in the school year in the in like Durham region. Those were never homes. Those were jobs. Yeah. Whereas our trailer was our home that all my family, friends, all my closest friends, all my friends growing up were uh, the guys at the trailer park. And, you know, it was like sort of like a campground type of thing mm -hmm. where like those, pe nobody really, there were some people that lived there, but we didn't really live there. And a lot of other people would like live in Oshawa or they'd live in Mississauga. And so like we'd had, those were our friends and my parents ended up selling the trailer once we all moved out and they bought a house in, in that town. So that's, that's where I like to, that's what I call home. It's Finland Falls. And, um, but basically having a biracial girlfriend helped me a lot because my experience, I only really had white people mm -hmm. to talk mm -hmm. to. Yeah. I didn't see, also my girlfriend is a, um, she's like a, a member of the LGBTQ community. So she's, she um, is a, like an ally herself too. And she, she just having her and, exposing myself to so many different people with so many perspectives and here i am so i'm a white guy who had a very rough upbringing a lot of a lot of violent um things that happened and here i thought then i go i go into my everyday uh, adult life and i'm told that i'm privileged and i that would make me mad the term would yeah, make me yeah, mad yeah 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 but now exposing myself to so many other different communities i am privileged because i'm white yeah i see this you know what i mean yeah yeah i yeah. never it, had someone i loved tell me what like exactly what it is mm -hmm. um and so now i'm able because i have her in my life and also the new friends that i have in my life in conjunction with martial arts and in conjunction with mellowing out a bit yeah i'm now able when i'm in stand-up i'm able to talk to so many different people and mm -hmm. meet them in a very loving place and a humorous place whereas before they'd be like oh kyle don't book him on a show yeah, like yeah, crimson yeah. wave because they don't would just assume kyle. they would just assume yeah. that you're like going to be abrasive towards them you know yeah like there'd be a thing like a common joke would be like don't book kyle on crimson wave well guess what i did crimson wave and killed <laughs> you know what i'm saying I yeah have, yeah I funny is funny man year. You know, I did Yuck Yucks last night and I, you know, it's like an X-rated show. I, I've got that gear. Yeah, I've yeah. got that gear. I've got yeah. an hour of that. Well, yeah. now, right, you can book me on, you know, clean shows now. You can book me. I want to be able to do my goals. I want to do Nubian in one day and mm -hmm. kill. I want to do so yeah, yeah, I've done Crimson, Wave. I mean, Crimson Wave was a goal of mine. 
because I wanted I, people used to bring me up on stage like he's the prince of darkness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's so contrived. That is so, what am I, Chris uh, Angel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a a person whose parents went to jail for abusing him. Mm -hmm. What does he like? He's literally just talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The thing that pisses me off is um, because I'm a white straight man is that if I say something fucked up, a true story of mine, yeah. people think I made it up. People think, oh, well, that never happened, but that's fucked up that you said that. And it's like, it's interesting like that you don't think I'm actually truth. just telling you a thing that ha happened to me. Yeah, people yeah. People think my experience is contrived because I'm a white straight man. And that honestly pisses me off so much. And so... It is what it is. And I think I get a lot of that. People don't think, people think whatever the fuck they want. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I don't think yeah. a guy who had a cushy life would step into a fucking ring. You know what no. I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, there's a thing in me that I needed to sort of just. And it's good that that healthy kind of outlet is there. Cause it's not, it's not even just about getting, finding a place for that anger. That's not in, you know, your art form per se, but it's also like, healthy for you to be physically active right which keeps your brain going but there's something i remember i don't know if you know like luis gomez from oh, yeah. uh yeah so there's a just what you saying that about like people couldn't believe it i just reminded me of this tweet where he said my father was stabbed to death outside of a strip club and my mother was a heroin addicted prostitute you should be thanking your lucky stars the worst thing i do is an offensive podcast i should be a serial <laughs> killer <laughs> and that's hilarious and that's funny but it's true you know what i mean like everything he said in there was exactly something that happened to his life right <laughs> another thing too it's like and i genuinely look at comedy like it's art yeah okay An offensive comic. What is that? What is that? When you watch Saw, you say the, the director is brilliant. Mm -hmm. When you watch Midsummer, you say the director is brilliant. When you listen to an offensive comic, it's just a different medium of the same essence. Mm -hmm. But we are ostracized. And it's honestly, genuinely, I think if people grew their hearts and actually talk to these quote unquote offensive comedians, they would see absolutely beautiful people and some mm -hmm. of the most kindest, genuine souls that have um, made my life a lot easier. Like a guy like Jason Rouse. Ooh, I was just scary. Bring him up. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's he has done more for so me. Nice. He's so he's nice. He's done so much for me. He's helped me so much. He, he's taken time when he did not have to. To help me who the fuck am i i was just some kid that he saw at a show yeah um ooh, scary no yeah, man yeah, yeah. that's yeah, his art up jj yeah. jj he's helping me yeah i have visa questions yeah hit him up you know what i mean so like behind the art is actually very very beautiful people that it's it's a shame that uh, pe people are seen for their, like, you know, every rose has their thorn. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. of course, of course. <laughs> it's sad, yeah. It, it, you know. And it's like comedy could be so much better if we just got, if like the whole community just got over the fact that like you are not necessarily who you are on stage. Like, I don't know how that's not, that doesn't resonate with a lot of people like people just take like what people or even what you say on the internet like i wanted a t-shirt that says you are not what you say on the internet like the internet has made people do and say crazy things and when you break it down you're like when you really boil it down you're like they're just trying to get a piece of attention because they're an entertainer that's part of their job they're advertising their brand and that happens to be their brand that's fine if you don't like it but like that doesn't mean you should hate the person necessarily that it's coming from because i guarantee that if you just walked up to them and talked to them they're completely normal completely yeah. normal and also like you know understanding and, and for myself like i've thought about it because people other comedians 
have called me like, oh, he's a monster. He's unsafe. You can't. <laughs> he's a monster. <laughs> it's pretty funny because I've gone out of my way to befriend um, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, people are surprised that who I'm friends with. I'm friends with everybody. Um, not, a, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm friends with everybody. I, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm friends with all walks of life. Mm-hmm. And because I, I, I've experienced a lot of walks of life, you know, like at my trailer park, there were like, there were straight up gang members. Yeah. Like in the, in the part, in the trailer next to me. And I'd have a beer with them. Yeah. I was also captain of my improv team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. had a beer with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I saw commonality in both those people. Mm-hmm. And I saw a person in both those people. And I didn't, I wasn't afraid of either of them, you know, because they were both good to me. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to comment on people's mistakes. But, um, you know, I forget my point. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing that I, okay, I've actually mentioned this story about you a couple of times already on this podcast, but I want to, people have heard it before. So I want to hear your side of it. But I always talk about how um, I you told I, me I, she I, was 18. I'm going to just, stop <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I never, I never wanted to do, um, oh, somebody had a great name for them. They call them flash mob comedy, where the the people at the restaurant have no idea that comedy is about to happen and they're in the middle of their meal. And I was like, the greatest story of this is Kyle Lucy putting the microphone up there and a woman is cutting her steak and she looks up and sees that like a comedy show is about to start. She just dropped her fork and knife and went, ah, fuck. Is this, did that happen? <laughs> yeah, you told me this, that this happened to you, that you were, I remember you telling me the story, you're like, the second I grabbed the mic, the first comic to go up to like start doing the show, and you just see this lady, she's cutting into a steak, she drops the fork and knife, and she just goes, No, like she just was visibly upset that this was about to ruin her meal. I think I do remember that. Um, I mean, <clears throat> this I've there's been so many shows, man. Like yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> they all I mean? started to blend together a little bit, right? But yeah, like um thankfully comedy has sort of changed i think um at least in my experience being mm-hmm. a toronto comedian soon to be i want to be a everywhere comedian but right now it, i'm a toronto comedian and you know there's not a whole lot of bar shows anymore it seems like a lot of clubs have opened up and um thankfully that's awesome even if there's four people at a comedy club i'd rather do that show yeah, than yeah, yeah. 20 people at a bar who are playing pool and there's a game on because the game on was always the worst. Oh, bro. There's so much intention to a club. You bought a ticket. You've walked in. It says comedy. You know, you're seeing comedy. Yeah. So if I say something at a comedy club, there is this underlying understanding that I'm joking. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas at a bar, you walk in, you don't know if that's a musician. You don't know if that's a poetry slam. I see something that's said in jest and it could be misunderstood or misinterpreted. And even though there's a lot of great bar shows, I'm very happy that the city's more clubby now. There's more clubs. Mm-hmm. That's I good. find that even is happening in Ottawa. Um, since moving here, the Yuck Yucks opened up uh, another club at Biagio's, which is like more on the, the West end. So now there's two yuck yucks that you can go to. Then there's, you know, absolute and absolute has like a satellite room where it's clear that it's an absolute like thing to laugh lounge open to, which is an, an incredible place. Um, and it feels more like, I mean, I did a show in the summer that I produced um, just like a one-off for a, a, a charity that I, it's actually from the Durham region. It's called Their Opportunity, um, where they help they help uh, families who can't afford to put their kids in sports. And basically the money goes towards paying for, you know, registration fees and supplies. And then they, it's just a pay it forward program. So the kids just have to volunteer in the community. So 
I would do things like comedy shows and then just donate the money to this charity through them, but it's sold out. And I was like, oh. damn, I, I'm new here to Ottawa and I was able to, you know, produce this charity show and sell it out and, and do it for a good cause. So that tells me that there is like a kind of awakening of comedy, even in this area, which is nice. Cause the biggest thing for Canadian comedians, and it's so sad, like if you look at the top talent, most of them are Canadian. When you really think about it, like Ryan Long killing it right now, Danny Polichek mm-hmm. going viral, killing it right now. Um, go as Dang. far, yeah, go as far back as fucking J- Jared Nathan is is yeah. like on Kill Tony like every other day. Like yeah. Chay Arena, ma- massive viral sensation. Like, and then go back even further. You got Lauren Michaels starting yeah. a, a troupe and then starting SNL. You know, but even to Danny do comedy Martinello. here sucks. Oh yeah, amazing. Danny Seattle. Just goes- he goes south of the border for a couple of days, wins one of the biggest, like, con- I mean, it's just it's one of those things. It couldn't it's- be more obvious that we produce great co- comedians, but there's zero support for us. But that's here. what makes us great. That's yeah. what makes us great. We do it despite and that. Yeah. Jason uh, Rouse was telling me, like, comedy in Canada is with weights on. And it's so true because we, <laughs> it is. comedy in Canada, we suffer with an issue of scarcity. Mm hmm. So I used to have a show, uh, the Renegade Comedy, right? Um, and I would just have like a barker to hand out flyers. I had an open mic comic look me in the eyes. And he was friends with some of the people I had barking. And this was like a guy I didn't know. He looked me dead in the eyes and he sold out all of his friends. He's like, I could bark way better than them. Fire them and have me. Wow. We have an issue of scarcity where we had a guy sell out <laughs> all of his fucking friends to hand out flyers on a show and not get paid. Wow. This is, this is you're like, bro, it's not hunger games. I just need help here. Like I was there's like, enough bread dude, rations <laughs> like that. Don't you know that this is going to make me not like you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause gonna, what are you going to do to me? Sold out your friends. <laughs> Why would I want you? And, uh, but that really, it was an eye opener for me. Cause it's yeah. like, we have nothing here. There's jack shit. Do you know how funny you fucking gotta be to get on? First of all, the first currency is good shows. Mm-hmm. Second currency currency is like the weekend spot on a good show. Then yeah. it's like getting paid. And then it's like actually, you know, making a living-ish. And then it's like the whole audience is here for me. Mm-hmm. You know, what? which is why content's so important. <clears throat> um but man like it's cr- we have to do so much and but that's what at the end of the day when we go down south down south it's like they are so much more opportunities like to to get as funny like right now you know uh, let's say my level right now or mm-hmm. just any level uh, let's take a comic that you know is making is working every weekend in Canada, um, has a following, and people are coming up to see them in Canada. Goes down south. Do you know how funny they had to be to get that? They're gonna. It's like gonna blow their minds, and they're gonna reap a lot of rewards when they go down south. Um, not to say that they're not gonna still work their fucking ass off, yeah, but it's just yeah. because. You know, and can't, you have to be so funny to get fucking crumbs here that when you, it's like Drag Mozi, you're training in fucking 10 times gravity. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. You know That's what a mean? good way to And then you it, yeah. actually <laughs> take the gravity away. It's like, holy shit. Now yeah. That people actually value this. Look how I much- like that though. I like that like sleeper cell kind of uh, attitude where like, we sit here in this, you know, cold uh, fucking prison and just train our asses off to become the best comedian among other killers. And then you go to this place and you appear new to them. Like they're like, I've never yeah. seen this person before. And then you hit them with like 20 years of stand up experience, essentially, because mm. it's condensed so much into that act. I think it gives it. It feels like a disadvantage at first if you have a more negative outlook of things and you're not optimistic. But if you're optimistic about your future, you would see that like 
oh, when I eventually do go to a larger market that will appreciate what I do and will pay me more for it and give me more opportunity, I'm going to be so much better off than the peers that I will be around in that territory because they haven't had the same amount of training that I've had to go through, the, the trudge through the same amount of shit that I've had to go through, right? Well, and not even to say that they don't down yeah, south. Yeah, like, sure. I'm not trying to say that at all, but... No, they suck. We're, we're making no. a stand, <laughs> line in the sand. No. no, but like, it's just, I think Americans would be very surprised Yeah. yeah. Um, what little support we have here. Um. And the fact that like, if, like when you're, when you say I'm a working comedian, right? That doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But when you're a working comedian in a place where there's no work, it's when you actually go to a place with work, it's, you know, you just, you sort of see, holy shit, you know, like this person's been so, I think basically what I'm getting at is it teaches you to be so resourceful. Mm -hmm. in a place with no resources that when you actually go to a place with resources you can you know do a lot because you've you've um made something from nothing for so long yeah and that's Um, because the scarcity has has done that it's it's yeah and and so it's as bad as it is it you know hard times make you strong I love that, man. Can you share like a, a, do you have like a particularly like memorable uh, on stage moment that kind of sits with you that helps you get through harder times, like something you reflect back on and be like, can't believe that happened. This is why I do this. Let me keep going. Um, Like in particular, <clears throat> not really, not really. I know I just, log off of zoom <laughs> <laughs> just shuts his laptop <laughs> um not really no i mean not in particular like what keeps me going yeah yeah is um results you know like and also other comedians that are doing very well yeah when i see what can happen it's it's incredibly inspiring you know um it's in, like I literally, I can't believe it. Um, and nowhere really in my life are there the opportunities that comedy that I see in comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I don't do comedy, I'm also a personal trainer, and like you know, I'm starting to fight in Muay Thai. For me, do you know how much work I'd have to do to? in that field to make as much as I'm making in comedy. It probably, if I quit comedy, it'd probably take me like almost 10 years. And by that time, you know, I'm, I'm 28, I'm going to be 38 and then I'd have to retire. So like, yeah, yeah. By the time you'd be hitting like a peak. Yeah. What I'm doing in comedy now. So it's yeah, like, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Like, and I'm not even really, who the fuck am I in comedy? But I'm saying like, you know, if you really stick with it, you will do well, Mm -hmm. you will. And that's for anybody, you know, because when I started out, everybody called me a hack because, and I was a hack when I, when I first started comedy. We, we all are. I think we all, what we do is we, and, and someone said this to me, a friend, a friend said this to me who, when I first started comedy, I showed him, I sent him like one of my videos, whatever that was like, it was like an unlisted video on YouTube. It was just to like, give him the link. And he was like, it changed the way that I do comedy. Cause he was like, Mm. it sounds like you're doing an impression of what you think a comedian sounds like. Right. And I think we all kind of do that a little bit. Like we, do an impression of of comedians that maybe were influenced by like did you find that that you were doing like uh, like oh i was a little bit like this comedian that i really sure like. is there one person that stands out to you yeah i mean i mean like jim carrey <laughs> i was just like people used to call me when i first started comedy i was just doing jim carrey and even like I mean, also what I was saying, I used to have jokes like, oh, I slept with a teacher in high school, but I was homeschooled. Like, it's just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. and when I look back on it, I actually had a lot of shame about 
my life and my experience in life that I didn't want to own my experience. I wanted to run from myself so that, um, but I still, I still wanted to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. So what, what I do is I would go up on stage fraudulent and even if it worked, it just wasn't, it was just so redundant. And I got, I got something out of it because I made people laugh, mm-hmm. but I felt like a fraud. Mm, okay. So Mark Breslin, actually, when one of the showcases I did with Yuck Yucks, he gave me like advice that changed the game. He said, you have something in you. It's there. You're afraid of it. And I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, I used to like do this really fucked up material, but I do it with a smile on my face because I, I never wanted to depress people. Mm -hmm. I had so much depression. I had so much bad in me. And he's like, just go up on stage and say it. It will bomb. You need to just say it. If it bombs, you need to take the hit. And you need to callous yourself in that until you rise out of that. Mm -hmm. I heard what he said. And bro, I'm not saying I bombed. I ruined every show when I, I was at the corner. Yeah. I, I would host and bomb so bad that every comic, <laughs> four other comics after me would bomb. I was saying, <laughs> like, my new material would be like, ah, so my mom, my mom raped me. <laughs> Maybe something like, there. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I would yeah. just sort of say, like, yeah. I was never raped by my mom, but I would say like um, some of my experience, and like I have a joke, like my new material is just admitting to crimes, mm-hmm. and over a while I was able to, okay, this is me. I was able to own me, <clears throat> and then joke mm-hmm. of that, a joke about my experience, yeah, and. It took me a, a while, um, and then there was. It was like this. It was upward trajectory, but it, I'd fail. I'd feel I'd bomb really bad and feel shame, and then I'd be like doing Louis C.K. on stage, mm. and then someone would call me out that I'm a hack. I'd be like, okay, fuck, and then I do me. It might work for five or six shows, and then bomb, and then I'd, you know what I mean. But then now, trying to find your way back, yeah, yeah. Like after a while. It's like, okay, this is who I am. I have so much shame. <laughs> but there's something <laughs> funny about that. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. It's funny yeah. when you can't get hard. <laughs> it's funny when you poo your pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny when you all... I wrote a bit about that, like something along the same vein of like what you're talking about, where I'm like, this is probably going to bomb the moment it leaves my mouth. But I just, I couldn't stop laughing at just the starting line of, have you ever lied about something because the truth is just disgusting? (laughs) Like, you you know what I mean? And then taking that kind of premise and being like, all right, I need to now admit something that's deeply disgusting that I did and make it funny. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm challenging myself to do because like the uncomfortableness of like, Oh, you were what, you know, that's, what's going to be funny about it, but it's, it's going to take a minute to get there. So I love the idea of like, you know, I know you said he was paraphrasing, but like callousing yourself to the bomb, like just eating the shit and then just being okay with it because it's going to help you in the long run. That because that's what I actually want to talk about. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I actually just go for it. Yeah. And as much as it as whatever is in your heart needs to come out. And it's that simple. And so many times I just I'm afraid mm-hmm. to say what's in my heart. But constantly, I am rewarded by killing when I say what's in my heart. So many times, and then bombing when I choose to not. Or even if I kill, I just feel fine. 
so over the years now i genuinely feel like when i go up on stage if i just open my heart i don't even overthink it now just fucking let it kills go. the nerves because you're like you get excited you're like this is my chance to vent what's on my heart right now yeah and like just really leaning in to to that and you know i'm sure i'm gonna look back on this and <laughs> go like oh my god and cringe well, I but that, i should you should yeah, if you yeah. look back on what you did a couple years ago and cringe it means yeah, you're doing yeah. you're always growing and yeah a lot of people like i you know i mostly talk to comedians on here and a lot of people say the same thing like oh i look back on what my first joke was and it's so cringy and i was like that's a good thing because that means your your bar of what's good is getting higher and higher mm -hmm. as you go along and you're just trying to match what you think is great work right so that's why you cringe at your old stuff because it's you at the time you might have thought this is the greatest shit ever but yeah. now looking back on it you're like no 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 i can raise the bar again i can make it even better and that's why that is cringy to you but we see it as like a negative like oh that was a part of my life that i'm ashamed of it's like no no, no don't be ashamed of that process um question though i want to turn over to you is if you can make a phone call to your 15 year old self give him a piece of advice knowing what you know now um, knowing that it doesn't affect your current timeline. It's a separate timeline that only affects 15 year old Kyle's life, but you have all of the knowledge that you've gathered now. What would you say to him? Um, hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I wish I believed in myself more. But at the same time, my insecurities are where a lot of my strengths come from. Like, um, but I, but I, I feel like I've gone out of my way to be someone who my younger self would be proud of. Um, so I'm happy on the path that I that I'm on, but. There were so many times that I just, I was, I chose fear. Like I, oh, no, no, no. And then I just wish that earlier on, I trusted myself more. Because my instinct was always right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'd go up on a show and I'd feel afraid to try this or afraid to try that. And then I just sort of settled and did this. And then I just look back like, man, like some of the stuff I'm doing on stage right now is the comedy that I've been wanting to do my whole mm -hmm. life. And it's so like, to me, it's so original right now, the shit that I'm doing. It's weird, fucked up, but very silly. <laughs> and that good, essence is what I've wanted for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I had parts of it. I was like very silly or very dark, but not silly mm -hmm. or very dirty, but not silly or dark and very, that. but it would be singular. Whereas now I'm saying shit. That's just like, I got this like long bit about milk right now and how much, <laughs> and like that, like they say that we're like 97% water, but we're actually made out of milk. <laughs> and i just started talking like it's so <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's all just... about milk and it's like my milk conspiracy and it gets to a point where the jokes like people are like oh my God. <laughs> i really take it to a place and that's the type of shit that i if i'm sitting at home that's who i'd follow you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I'm laughing. That's what we want to do is be the person that we're like i fuck with that i want to be like following this person for these reasons you know yeah. And I think that's partially why like online I'm starting to get a little bit of growth is because I'm starting to like, thing is I wouldn't change anything because I've truly been burned. I failed at that. I failed at this. I failed at that. And I failed again at this and it blew up in my face. I was humiliated and it'd be like, well, I guess the only other option is to do it the way that's true to me. 
Mm -hmm. to trust myself and to actually say, you know what, kid, before every show, before every fucking show, people will see me doing this right before I go up on stage. And I'm writing the same fucking affirmation to myself because I don't believe in myself. I, I wake up every day at negative 100 and I work my ass off to get to zero. Wow. And I used to look in the mirror and say, I hate you. And so now every time I go up on stage, I write, you are Kyle Lucy. You are funny. You are talented. You deserve to be here. If you don't believe in yourself, why should anybody else go up on stage and do what you were born to do? Shine, shine, baby, shine. I word for word. I write that every single day, every single time I'm about to go up on stage. I'm going to start uh, writing that. I am Kyle Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know I know what you mean? Mean? Because sometimes yeah. people go, no, that's so hear... important, man. So important. Yes. You hear yeah. your name before yeah. they bring you up. Yeah. And so yeah, it's not yeah. to say like, Ooh, I'm Kyle. But yeah, you hear yeah. your name before they bring you up. And sometimes you'd be like, ah, nah, nah. but you can't. You got to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm funny. I do deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. I worked my ass off. You know what I'm saying? And like, just, I, I wish I told my younger self that this, that thing that was inside me to let that out. I, I, I grew up poor, man. I, I, I thought I sucked. I mm -hmm. thought I fucking was trash. I thought I was Dude, I remember you told me that you there was a point, I think it was when you were hosting at Ajax Yuck Yucks and you were living in maybe Pickering, <laughs> but you were telling me that you felt like you didn't deserve to like have a bed. And you and you had and you had done like I'm like, Kyle, what? Like, and you had done like commercials, like you were like in a commercial. Oh, you know what I mean? I like you had you had money place. to buy a bed, but you just there's a lot of when you grow up poor and I grew up kind of middle class poor in like poor neighborhood, but it was like my parents worked their asses off right to get everything they had. And there was a lot of times when they told me like, sorry, we can't we just can't get that for you. And so I have that mentality now of even if I have money, I'm like, I feel bad buying shit for myself. Mm. I feel that like so I, I got that at 100 percent when you said that to me. Yeah. And just like, man, if I did what I'm doing now earlier, it would have, I mean, yeah, I mean, high science 2020, but I just feel like I'm not trying to say anything other than like, I'm just sort of sad that I, I, I trust it. I, I trust everybody else, but me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I just wish that I gave myself more of a chance. And now that I am, and I see that it's working, it just makes me sad that I didn't do it earlier. Yeah. But. Well, man, this is why I do podcasts so that we can pass these messages on to because there's a lot of younger comedians that listen to this podcast. I know they come up to me and they're like, oh, I like I took a book recommendation that you that a guest said on the podcast and I'm reading it and it's changing whatever. So that's really the importance behind that question, too, is to like mm -hmm. take those life lessons and pass it on someone else to cut their education time in half. Right. Um, Man, you're on to great things. And especially with this mindset, I know you're going to be absolutely killing it very, very soon. Even more Thanks, than you man. are now. You're going to go to even bigger heights. I can just tell. Um, I'm trying. Go, go follow Kyle on Instagram at Kyle Lucy Comedy. Go blow up his TikTok page and all the other. It's all going to be down in the description <laughs> below. Kyle, do you want to promote any shows that you're coming up? This will be out April 3rd. So I don't know if you have... Any yuck yucks weekends that you want to push or? Yeah, well, yeah, right now I'm, it's, it'll be too late, but I'm at Yuck Yucks Niagara Falls all weekend right now. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say some dates. March, is that March? March 1st, I'm headlining Comedy Bar. Uh, March 2nd, I'm headlining the SoCap Theater in Toronto. Um, March 3rd, I'm uh, doing Dark Comedy Festival. Uh, March 8th, I'm headlining this thing in Mississauga. Um, then I got, uh, what's this? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Headlining in Kitchener, March. All this shit's going to be on my Instagram. I got yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like is there a spot that you could man I need to do like a course teaching comics how to push their dates just be like March 3rd Kitchener this place this time be there I mean, yeah like <laughs> I, I 
I've got some some dates coming up because for so long I was in training camp and yeah. I was doing like local shows. I was gigging every night, but I wasn't like leaving the city as much unless I was mm-hmm. with Yuck Yucks. But now I'm like fucking going back full into it. Pe- pedal to the metal to like, Fuck you yeah. know. Yeah. So well man, fire over the um comedy album stuff once it's once it's out, and I'll just put it into the description of this episode. So if anyone's listening to this episode a year later, they can go click on the comedy special and get access to it. But uh Sweet. man, thanks so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Uh everyone listening, don't forget to leave a five-star review if you're on Apple Podcasts. That always helps. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. But for now, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. And until next time, keep it classy. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 